Hi everyone, and welcome to my first Purple Space Program video. In this video, we will be sending an SSTO space plane to the MUN to bring a cargo lander with it to land on the MUN and bring some new parts to my mobile MUN base. For those of you that don't know, the MUN is Kerbal Space Program's analog of the moon. So before you launch the SSTO, we will have to do an abort test because here at C7 Aerospace, safety is of utmost priority. So you can see me accelerating up to 150 meters per second in this SSTO on the runway. This SSTO is pretty powerful, it has four rapier engines, so it's, it shouldn't take too long to get there. And three, two, one, we have hit 150 meters per second. Deploy the drogue suit, drogue shoot, max brakes, and we stopped in pretty much no time. So for those of you wondering how I got the SSTO to stop that quickly, basically all you have to do is set the brakes to 100% on the rear wheels and make sure you set the friction control to 100% as well. That way the SSTO won't start sliding about on the runway. Now, since the abort test was passed, here we go, launching the actual SSTO. So pretty similar ascent pro, uh, runway profile as the abort test, just instead of hitting the abort button at 150 meters per second, we will rotate and it become airborne. So yeah, once again, this SSTO is powered by four rapiers and two nuclear engines for vacuum propulsion. Not the most powerful engines in the world, but uh, good enough for what we have to do here. There we go, we are airborne, we're tracking the landing gear, and uh, this SSU is pretty powerful because it has four rapier engines, I said that three times now, wow, I'm very repetitive, am I? Um, so we won't have to yeah, fly flat at sea level to get to the 440 meter per second or magical barrier where the rapiers unlock their full potential as the airflow is coming at them very, very quickly. They're designed for high speed flight. There's a nice cockpit shot for y'all. And there you go, 440 meters per second. I think I kind of forgot to pitch up, so we actually pitched up a little bit. Yeah, you can see me slowly starting to pitch up. We will pitch up all the way until 20 degrees on the nav ball. That way we can clear the thickest part of the atmosphere as we no longer need that much air for the rapiers to start generating the max amount of thrust. Once we get to about 8,000 meters, above the surface, we will start to pitch down actually, so that we can use the air from 10,000 meters to 20,000 meters in altitude to the maximum potential. This way we can gain as much horizontal speed as possible, and we don't have to worry about having excessive drag, which is why I pitched up all the way to 20 degrees, so there we go. We are pitching down to about 10 degrees and holding that for almost the entirety of the ascent. Here you can see the plasma lapping around the sides of the SSTO. It got pretty toasty at the front, as you can see that temperature gauge there, but I was not worried at all. So you can see me momentarily checking our apoapsis height, and once our speed starts to drop, which will happen, I think, in like a few seconds, then we can fire up the nuclear engines so that we can continue our accelerations. So here, there we go, nuclear engines have started. And once the thrust of the rapiers falls below 30 kilonewtons, we can fire up their closed cycle mode. Not the most efficient way of using the rapiers, but enough to get to, but make sure our apoapsis, our highest point in our orbit, rises above the atmosphere before we get there. There we go, it has, it's about 75 kilometers, which is well above Kerwin's atmosphere, which stops at about 70 kilometers. And here I am shutting down the rapiers one by one so that the rapiers don't suddenly start in flight. Kind of got messed up here, so it's a little bit messy. Then I can make a maneuver node where we will raise our periapsis, or the lowest point in our orbit, to be above Kerbin's atmosphere, so we are in a stable orbit. It was not a, not a pretty big burn, it was about 400 meters per second. There we go. Uh, you can hear me, you can see me here momentarily firing the nuclear engines, so because the, we are still within, well we were still in the atmosphere, so the little, the reading at the bottom was a little bit off, the reading where it tells us when to start our burn was a little bit off, because it was still using the nuclear engines very poor thrust inside the atmosphere. So there we are accelerating, 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 and shut down, so there we have a nice 
75 kilometer orbit it's not exactly circular but it's good enough for me there we go now you can see the lander it's a nice shot there the lander and now we are headed towards the Mun so yeah I, you, here you can see me making a maneuver node um, all the way to the Mun uh, I should have made I should have moved the maneuver node instead of simply burning radial in but I was lazy and so that's what I did there we go warping all the way around around the almost we're burning around apoapsis there we go starting up the nuclear engines so that we can begin our trans munar injection I, I activated four times physical time warp there so it wasn't so boring for you keep in mind this footage is being played back very very fast i think it's two or four times speed not so sure and there are apoapsis is rapidly shooting up as we finish our burn and there shut down our Mon Periapsis, I think, is about 68. I can't really see that there. It's quite small on my video editor right now. And uh, sorry for the janky look of the camera. I'm using a laptop, so I don't have, I decided not to use a mouse. I was stupid. Uh, so yeah. And here, you can see me doing a exterior an inspection with our engineer, Bill Kerman. So he will use his EVA jetpack to check the air brakes and all the other necessary equipment related to the SSTO that could have been damaged during the ascent. There you can see him opening up the air brakes one by one, well actually two by, uh, by, by in pairs, sorry I can't speak, and they're EVA to the bottom air brakes to check those ones as well. Not a very skilled EVA pilot person, so I hit a bunch of stuff, which I think is acceptable. They're Kerbals, by the way. They're Kerbals anyway, so it's not like they really care about safety. Right, pretty ironic that I had to do an abort test. Um, yeah, so we finished the exterior inspection. We are going back and we have boarded the Mark II command pod. So here, we are gonna warp to Mun, to the Mun. Now you can see the Mun slowly appearing as we get closer and closer to it. There we go, isn't that nice? Oh, it's kind of plain. It just looks like a black dot right now. Um, so yeah. And there, I actually created a maneuver node so we could circularize at the Mun, but in the end, you will see that I decided, hey, let's just not use that, right? So yeah, and that's the maneuver node warped up to it. And um, yeah, I did not use that maneuver node and instead entered a very oval or what, what, what's that word? Um, there was a word. I forgot what that word is. Come on. Um, an oval-shaped orbit. It's not not circular. What's that word? Come on. I'm so stupid. Um, so yeah, we're doing a retrograde burn or backwards burn to slow us down relative to the Mun, so that we can have an orbit. There we go. Our apoapsis has appeared, and uh, it is slowly coming towards the Mun. There we go. So I've settled with a pretty elliptical. I think that was the word. There we go. Now I finally got it elliptical orbit and I uh, just just to check out how much delta V I would need to lower my periapsis to get close to the Mun base I just made a small maneuver node right there so here we are about to deploy the payload which is that little lander here so we'll point progress make it look all nice and pretty open up the cargo bay doors and boom we have released it I make, make sure to set the decoupler to have a 0% ejection force, otherwise you'll just slam it into the cockpit in the front. So there, we have cleared the lander from the SSTO. And yeah, so I, I wanted to see if I could, um, you know, make it make it stop moving away from the SSTO as fast as it could. Didn't work as, uh, didn't work out as I planned, but uh, I was fine anyway. So you're warping up to Apoapsis, so I should make creating a maneuver node first. Then warping up to Apoapsis, and we're going to do our retrograde burn to lower our periapsis further towards the Mun, so we can get close to our eventual landing site. Yeah, so keep in mind if you're going to actually do this mission, that the Mun is going to rotate. So I actually, uh, so I kept that in mind when I made the maneuver note and made sure that we were ahead of the Mun base. Did a little bit too much and we ended up being a little too far ahead but I was I'm way too lazy to reload a quick save and I don't I don't even I don't even think I made a quick save so yeah 
Yeah, so here we are about to start our retrograde burn to lower our periapsis into the Mon's surface. There we go, we started the burn and shut down. Wonderful, isn't it? And then warp down. There we go. And I ended up overshooting the target. I probably said that before, but uh, this is take two actually of the recording, so I don't remember. <laughs> um, sorry again for the janky look of the camera. The cursor is probably moving very, very rapidly all over the place because I'm using a trackpad to adjust the camera angle. So yeah, you can see me playing around with the, with, with the maneuver node because I never seem to remember which direction uh, which direction to burn because I don't know what radial and radial does because I'm a bad pilot. So I have to always use the maneuver node maker singing bobber to just kind of play around with it and see what ends up happening. So yeah, burning radial in this time, very, very in. And then I did a radial out burn, radial in again. No, this time is, what is it? Um, Anti-normal or normal or something like that. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Um, to uh, raise our eventual landing point a little bit more north. So we could get closer to the base, which is marked as like, looks like a little structure piece on the map screen right now. There you go, that little green marker on the on the Mon surface is the the base itself, is the flag of the base right there, you can see it, light green. And uh, sorry y'all, with some lighting change, this was take three of the landing. And so I decided to add a little filter uh, in the video editor so that you can actually see stuff a little bit better. Didn't work out as I planned, but I think it helped a little bit. Um, so then you can actually see the ground a little bit better. Burning towards the target. I'm trying my best to try and get there. It didn't work out as planned, but uh, yeah, anyway. Here we are warping, we're well, not warping down, we're just kind of coasting down, started the engine and uh, retrograde burn, trying to decelerate as fast as I can. I was a little bit worried we we're gonna impact the surface a little bit too fast because I started the burn a little bit too late but in the end uh, you'll see what happens in a few, literally a few seconds here. So deceler decelerating, decelerating, decelerating very very rapidly and then here I was deploying the landing gear and I completely forgot that I started to ascend and uh, so it was a little panic there and it was it was no big deal. And so we went back up and started coming back down again, pointing retrograde and just coast down towards uh, the surface and momentarily puffing with the spark engine, I think is the engine at the bottom, to slow us down and then we're about to touch down here. Come on, touch down, touch down, there we go, touch down. Uh, we were on a little bit of slant here, so I tried my best to make sure it didn't flip over. Um, by transferring some of the fuel to the lower tank so that the center of mass would be a little bit lower and make it less prone to flipping. And uh, yeah, moving the camera around and warping to sunrise so that you can actually see things a little bit better. And I actually adjusted the spring strength because I decided that was the right thing to do. Remove from symmetry and increase the spring strength. Wonderful. Now we are at the mobile Mun base. Um, we're going to track the drill, turn on some of the lights and turn off some of the other lights and we're going to drive our way over to the little pink marker there which is the lander itself. Here we are turning and driving over there. So I think this base looks pretty nice. It's It consists of Mark II lander cans, three, three Mark II lander cans at the front in their rover configuration. We're very basically next to each other with a bunch of crew cabins and a two Mark I lander cans at the back. Those are the gray oct octagon shaped pieces. And yeah, so in the middle is the convertron. Oh my goodness, there we go. Sorry for the janky uh, transition there. So I decided to just cut away to the end result. And here we are um, commencing our EVA construction. So yeah, uh, the first thing I did was attach the radiators on to the convertitrons because those are a main source of heat. Yeah. 
Yeah, here, here you can see me attaching the ore tank, trying to look for a good spot to put it. Walking around the SSD, I'll admit it was pretty hard to put the last two pieces on the ore tank and the Oscar B fuel tank. And you can see me trying to flip it around furiously, trying to find a good place to put it. Eventually, I settled on the bottom part of the rover to that. To use the rotate tool and the offset tool and drag it all the way around and look for good places to put it. There we go. Putting it inside the, well, not inside, but uh, near the structural piece at the bottom of the rover. And here you can see me trying to attach the Oscar B fuel tank. It was very, very difficult to put it on, I'll admit. Because I wanted to put it at the back of the little structural piece under the middle of the rover. But, uh, well, it didn't work as I planned. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, e I eviate to the top and I accidentally moved the drill, which was a huge pain to put back. Uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't fun at all trying to put the drill back on. So just uh, flip it around, use the offset tool, rotate tool, yada yada, all that stuff. I've said that a lot of times now. And yeah, so you can see I settled on this position in front of the, of the battery, in, which is in front of the convertitron right there. There, it grabbed on and we boarded the rover again. Now, we need to destroy the lander because I don't want to leave any debris on the mountain and I don't know any other better way to destroy it, so I decided to destroy it like it is a missile or missile, depending on where you live. Uh, missile is what I like to say. Warp up and I decided to check out how high we were going to go and it was not that high. It was, I think it was just over 5,000 meters above sea level on the mountain. And here we are, about to point to prograde or forward and burn, 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 and uh, yeah, there we go. Pretty anticlimactic, um, but uh, who cares, really? Okay, now the last thing we need to do is land the SSTO, which I don't think I've ever mentioned the name, is the turn. So here we are warping to a area where we are going backwards relative to Kerbin's orbit and burning with the nuclear engines. Prograde, which is actually retrograde relative to curb to Kerbin. Don't know if that made sense, but uh, yeah. And our our periapsis is slowly going down and I into Kerbin's atmosphere, and I settled on 33 kilometers as the height that I wanted. So here you can see me uh, transferring fuel forward. Otherwise, our center of mass would be way too far back and near our center of lift, which would make the craft unstable during reentry. Yeah, so here we are warping down. I have to make a quick save here. I think it's called Landing Important. I know, right? Pretty lame name. Warping down, and I change the action group uh, to include the air brakes in the brake action group because otherwise, it had it, it was not there before because it had it would, if it were there, oh my goodness, I literally can't talk. If it were there, then uh, during the abort test, it wouldn't have worked as planned. So the air brakes heated up very, very quickly, so I had to retract them soon after re-entry. And here we are holding prograde, and I decided it was not a pretty good way of slowing down because it's way too aerodynamic when we're facing prograde. So I pitched up a little bit, pitched up way too much, and uh, we entered this little flippy, flippy zone because our center of mass is still close to our center of lift, and so it was still pretty unstable. But it was fine in the end, we managed to get back to prograde. Here we are, pointing prograde again, and I decided to uh, deploy the air brakes. And this time I actually turned on their pitch and yaw so that they would actually contribute to the control of the craft while in air. So yeah, here we are. I decided to let's pitch up a little bit more and this time be a bit more careful so we wouldn't, you know, flip again like we did. And uh, again, I'm a pretty bad pilot. This is foreshadowing, by the way, in a few minutes, or maybe 30 seconds, you'll see what I mean. So yeah, warping all the way around, and uh, once we exit the atmosphere, I can engage non-physical time warp, so you can warp up to, I think it's 1,000 times time warp, all the way around, and stop. There we go. Pointing prograde again. That's right, deploying the air brakes, yada yada, all that fun stuff. And um, this time we're a lot slower than we were last time, partly because of that flip and because we deployed the air brakes. 
So you won't see the flames until we're a little bit lower into Kerbin's atmosphere. There we go. There are the flames starting to appear around the SSTO. And uh, yeah, so the air brakes are doing a good job of slowing us down. And I just had to do a little bit more pitch up this time. And I thought maybe the air brakes could protect us from flipping because now they're contributing to the control of the craft. And it didn't work and we flipped again. It wasn't too bad after one flip. We managed to get back to prograde because um, I'm a good pilot, no just kidding, I'm a terrible pilot. And yeah, so here we are, I slowed down again a lot from that, and here we are aiming for the desert, I was like, nice, we're aiming for the desert. And I always wanted to land in the desert because it's smooth and flat, you know? And so I was like, okay, we're, we're headed for the desert so I can engage some physical time warp. And I was a bit too liberal with that, and we ended up flipping again, you, as you will see in a little bit. Yeah. So I decided to retract the air brakes because we didn't need to slow down anymore. Otherwise, we'd be heading for a mountain range, which would be pretty bad because we don't want to land in mountains, obviously. So yeah, our air brakes are retracted, coming down, and uh, momentarily deployed the air brakes. That was a mistake. Now we're headed for mountains again. Physical time warp, and boom, we flipped. And this was the most problematic flip because I could not get it to stop flipping for whatever random reason. So I activated the rapiers and activated their closed cycle mode so that when we are getting close to the program marker, we can fire up the engine and align ourselves again. So here we are still flipping, flipping, flipping. And I think it was two flips after this one, then I activated the rapier, that I actually turned on the rapier. They're already activated. Oh, there we go. So now we are pointing prograde. Wonderful. And of course, my plan to land in the desert was completely scrapped uh, because of the whole flippy thingy. So I decided, okay, let's just land in this plains, in this flat area. Not too bad, is it? Pour the air brakes again to make sure we don't start accelerating too much. And uh, yeah, so the air brakes are deployed and, and it's gonna be a good landing. Yeah, come on, why did I say that? But it was a pretty good landing. <laughs> um, so I retract the air brakes again and I realized we were starting to accelerate again, so I deployed the air brakes again. Uh, so you wouldn't keep accelerating. A little bit of physical time warp, but this time I learned my lesson, didn't use too much of it. And um, yeah, so here we are getting close to the surface. Deployed that landing gear. First, we have to adjust the fully deployed altitude of the parachute. Another quick save, also called landing important. And um, yeah, so we made sure the parachute didn't deploy, fully deploy too early. And deploy the landing gear. And I think I deployed the parachute. Uh, did I deploy the parachute? I'm not sure. Not too far from now, actually. Um, come on, deploy. There we go. Now I deployed the parachute and fully deployed about 150 meters above the surface and uh, coming, I, I decided to land on this little hill here because it's always ideal to land on hills um, because then you, you can have a angle of attack that's not going to impact your landing performance. There we go, hit the ground, deploy the, the brakes and the air brakes and oh, it was good. We stopped, uh, we leaned back momentarily. It was no, not, not too bad, was it? Um, and yeah, so I had to keep you know, pitching down to make sure we don't flip back again and uh, showing a lot of unnecessary stuff. Should have cut this out, but I didn't and I'm too lazy to, so you gotta bear with it. <laughs> XD. Um, increase the spring strength so that we don't flip over again. And um, yeah. Important message. This video is brought to you by, by my parents. Um, this week is their anniversary, so if uh, you want to join them, join me in celebrating their 14th anniversary, then you can hit the subscribe button, the like button, and all that stuff. If you Once again, if you enjoy the video, subscribe, like, and comment down below what you think. It really helps me because as this is my first video. Once again, thank you for watching.